Right, so welcome back to a new guide on this channel. And on this occasion, we need to talk about the transport bar. So if you're a seasoned user, maybe you already know most of the actions, but maybe you're starting and you're a little bit confused with some of the options that you get right here at the top. So we will go one by one and some of them are pretty simple to understand, but some of them will require an example. All right, so let's just begin, have a tiny little drum sample right here. So we're gonna start on this section and then we're gonna move our way up. So right here you have your tempo, whatever you're playing, you can play it slower or you can go faster. Pretty simple. By double clicking, we'll go always uh, to 120 BPM. Then you can use your tap to tap and this will calculate the BPM. Right, so very simple, we don't need a very specific example, but then we have your nudge. I'm gonna be playing this. Now this is a one time only, so you need to press and hold to create an effect. If I press and hold, it's gonna slow down the tempo. But it's gonna do it temporarily. As, as, as long as, uh, you know, as soon as I release this, it's gonna go back to the original tempo. If I do the same thing with the other one, it's gonna go faster. And I'm pressing and holding. I'm gonna release it in three, two, one, and it slowly goes back to the original tempo. So this is more uh, like a performance uh, thing. Then you have your time signature right here. Uh, usually it's 4-4, you know, Western music, but you can change it to whatever you want. Now, as soon as you do this, the background, the grid that you have right here in the back is gonna change uh, to reflect whatever time signature that you're doing. Right, so all of this belongs to the tempo section. Now we need to talk about this section. So this is the quantization, you know, part of the quantization menu. So we're gonna start here and then we're gonna talk about the metronome. So right here it says one bar. So okay, so I'm gonna be standing right at the beginning and I'm gonna be going to right here, this scrub area, and I'm gonna be doing a play. I'm gonna do some playing back, right? And if I play it right here, it's gonna play it right there. If I go back to the beginning, it's gonna play right there. Now the thing is that as soon as I play, as soon as I click, it's not uh, going instantly to that selection. It's awaiting for something and then starts from there. And this is because of this quantization menu. It says that it needs to wait for one bar to be over for it to go back and play back whatever is it you're trying to play back. And that's why it's, you know, a little bit laggy. Now. You can go right here and change it to whatever you want. Let's say, just to make it obvious, I need to wait eight bars, which is, you know, quite a lot, for it to restart the playback. So I'm gonna be doing some playback. I'm gonna be clicking and maybe I just want to start right here. So it's gonna go there when it reaches or it's gonna need to await for the eight bars to be over in order to go back and play it back from this section, right? So it's taking a long time. So this depends on what you want to do and how you want to work with. You want to work with one, one bar, which is the default, or you can even just turn it off. And if you play it, it's gonna instantly go to whatever you want to start the playback, right? So it, again, it's just completely up to you. The default is gonna be one bar. And also notice that you have some control combinations, so you can change the quantization. So one bar is the default word. Right, so the metronome, pretty simple. You turn it on or you tune it back off. If I turn it on, you're gonna hear the metronome. And if you turn it on, turn it off, it's just gonna stop, right? So very simple. Now, things that you have, you do have some options. Some of them are really simple. Some of them will require an example. So if I play it back and just go right here and turn it on, you can use the type of sound. Classic, it's just classic. Click is a click and then wood. Is a word. Also, you can change the type of rhythm. My default is gonna be auto, but you can change it to something else. And notice it, it just keeps, still keeps the same, but it's just gonna change the rhythm. I'm gonna go back to classic. So it depends on what you want to do. You know, you want to change the rhythm or the type of sound. Now the other options, uh, if I go there, is gonna be the count in and the enable only when uh, while recording. So by default, the count in, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be off. So I'm gonna go to this one, enable only while recording. Now this one, it's on. I'm gonna be playing back and notice it's just not giving us the, the, the click, you know, the metronome. And if I go to a silent part, you can clearly hear that this is not happening. But as soon as I turn on the rec right here, it's gonna give us the metronome, right? So this is, 
why it's only in evil when recording. It doesn't matter if it, this is on or off, when I do a recording, we should be getting it, but you need to turn it off in order to turn it on in order to get it. But as soon as I stop and keep the playback, it's just not gonna give us that. Right? So pretty simple. So let me just delete this. And then you have the, your, the, the other side, which is going to be the count in. By default, when I start recording, it's, uh, let me stand right here. Let's say I'm going to be, yeah, I'm going to put the cursor right here. And when I start recording, it's going to give me the, uh, you know, the metronome. But only it starts right here and it's a start, it's starting when I uh, press the rec, the rec button, right? There's no count in. So this is why you get the count in. By default, it's none. So let's say I want to start right here and I want to maybe go all the way to the beginning. And I want to start recording when the drums start. So if you're selecting one bar, it's going to count in, you know, one bar before it starts recording. So if I uh, record, it's going to say one, two, three, four, and then records. So this is great when you're, you know, when you're tracking because it's going to prepare you uh, to start recording. You can go to two bars, which is going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then it goes in. Still, if you don't want it, uh, you can go right there and just turn it off. And for now, I'm just going to disable uh, enable only when, when recording and I'm going to just turn it off. Right, so all of these options that we have right here are pretty simple, but you know, some of them require an example. Let's just move forward to this section that we have right here. So play, it's play, right? If I click the play, it's just gonna restart. If I do stop, it's gonna stop. But notice that the cursor right here stays right there, stays put. So if I do play, still it's gonna be restarting. If I do a double click on the stop, it's gonna go all the way back to the beginning. It doesn't matter where you are. Double click, stops and goes back to the beginning. And then rec enables recording, right? Pretty simple. Now, still, you we uh, you know we have some tricks. So pressing the space bar, you know, gonna press the space bar and it's gonna play. And if I play, if I press the uh, space bar again, it's just gonna stop. If I play the space bar again, it's gonna play it again back to, from the beginning. So if my cursor is right here and then I press the space bar, it's gonna start playing back right here. I press it again, it's gonna stop and I press it again and it's gonna start from your, from whatever your cursor is. Right. Now I'm gonna press the space bar back to the beginning, press the space bar and it's gonna start playing back. Now I'm gonna do shift and I'm gonna be doing space and it's gonna stop the playback. But then again, doing shift and space, instead of going back to the cursor, it's gonna continue from where the cursor is. So it's like a pause, right? Instead of a stop, it's just pausing the playback and then shift and space bar we will continue from that section. From where you are, right? Um, you from where you are actually. So uh, another thing that you can do is that you can do, you can uh, make a selection. So if I make a selection just like this, you know, click and drag, I'm gonna do control space bar, it's gonna start playback from whatever the selection is. If I select it right here and I do control playback, it's gonna start from here. Right? So, you know, just tiny little cool tricks that you need to know uh, to make your life a little bit easier. I'm gonna press the space bar just to just play back and holding the F uh, the function button and doing F9, you know, you just need to do F9, is gonna toggle the record on and it's gonna toggle off, right? So you can do F9 and it's just toggle the record on and off. Right, so let me just delete all this. So at the left, you have uh, some other options. So this one's, uh, what, what we'll do, it will just uh, give you information of, uh, you know, where you're standing. The, it's gonna give you the time, you know, the beats, the bar, beats and 16s. It's just, again, a visual reference uh, to tell you where you, where you are. And still, you can just adjust your playback right here manually with this controls. And you can also type a number, double click and maybe select it. And if I do nine, it's gonna go to the bar nine or do one or 91, it's gonna go to the 91. But again, it's just a way of just manually uh, standing on a position. Now, right here, we have a left arrow. So this one is gonna be the follow. So let me just give you an example. I'm gonna go all the way, I'm gonna make it really big. So this loop, of course, is pretty long. If I play it back, the playback is gonna keep going on, going on. And as soon as we reach the final part, we are not able to see where we are doing that playback. 
right? So the follow, what will do, it will let us follow whatever it is that you're playing back. So if I play it, now you're gonna see the difference. Instead of just getting stuck, it's gonna follow for us. It's just gonna keep moving so you can see what you're playing back. And this is a good thing because maybe if I go all the way back, if you're recording, maybe you're just playing something and you're not able to see where you are, but if you're able to follow, you are. And if you yeah. play notes, right? So you can see what you're doing on the time range. Okay, so let's talk about the looping. Right from the start, if you want to loop a section of the, let's say your drum kit, your drum section, you need to enable the loop on. So as soon as it enters the loop, right here, it's gonna enter. It is, uh, you know, gonna keep going, going on, but when it reaches the end, it's gonna loop back from the beginning of your loop. If this is the save vault, it's just, well, it will not listen to your loop. All right, so this is, where you enable your loop. Now there's more. If you select your loop, you can use your arrows to move the loop bar just up or move it down. Now I'm using the left and the right keys just to move it up or down. But what happens if I press the up and down? So I'm gonna be pressing the up and then the down. So what this does is going to, you know, listen to how many bars or how many beads you have selected. And then it's just gonna, you know, gonna go to the next one. For example, if I select four right here, let me just do this. I'm gonna do four. And now I'm gonna press the up bar. So that's, that's gonna take you to the next four. Then the next four and so on and so on and so on. I'm pressing the up key. If I don't go down, it's gonna do the same. Now, if I do it by one, just something like that, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do up and it's just gonna, of course I need to select it first. I'm gonna need to go, go up and it go, goes up by one, right? Now, let me just give you another example. Let's say I make the uh, the bar just one, right? So uh, by doing control and doing the up key, it's gonna extend the bar. I need to select it. Uh, it's gonna extend the bar. So if I do it, it's gonna extend it and it makes sense. Yeah, but we were already uh, able to do this with the left and the right key. But now the up is gonna kind of add whatever it is that you're trying to do. For example, if I select just like this, four bars, and I do control and I do up, the up key is gonna duplicate this and it's gonna be selecting eight bars. If I do it again, it's not gonna be 12 bars, it's gonna be 16 bars, right? Because eight plus eight is 16. Now if I press the down key, it's gonna do the same. It's gonna delete, delete and delete and delete. Now also another thing that you can do, you can select, for example, an area right here where you want to work with and by doing control and L is gonna just take you and loop that section. And also notice that the loop turns on, right? So I'm gonna turn it off and show it again. Maybe I want to loop this section. I'm gonna do Control L. It's gonna take me to the section and enable the loop. Also, by doing Control, if you're not selecting anything, Control and L is gonna to toggle on and off the loop bar. Now, what I want to do, I want to talk about the punch in and the punch out. And for this, we need to create a good example. All right, so let's say I want to record a section that we have right here and right here have synth. So if I play it again, you know, we have some synth uh, sound right here. So I want to record this section. So maybe I'm gonna be pressing my loop bar right here and I'm gonna be recording this section. So if I stand the cursor right here and I enable the loop, I'm gonna be starting recording. I'm gonna start recording from here. So when we reach to the section, still we are recording outside, so we can play something and it's gonna be recorded, right? Now, as soon as it ends, since we are looping, it's gonna go back and it's deleting everything I'm doing. We're gonna talk about this. So maybe I just don't want to do this. This is, you know, a little, it's just not bad, but maybe you just, you have a better way. And it's the punch in and the punch out. So if I'm doing no loop, but I do punch in, or punch out, when I start recording, I'm gonna maybe stand right here, and I start recording, notice that it's not recording from here. It will only start recording from this section. So I can do something like that, and it's gonna keep going recording, and when it ends, it's not gonna loop back, it's gonna stop recording. So it makes sure that we only record uh, over, over this section, and not before, and not after. 
So it's just a nice, easy way, uh, because when you're tracking, sometimes, you know, maybe recording an offset from before or after, sometimes it sucks. So by doing this, you make sure that you record over this section only. Now, you do have combinations of this. What if I want to do punch in and not punch out? So right here, the lines, when you enable this, notice that the loop is off. Uh, right here, the lines disappear. So if I do here, punch in, it means that it will just start recording. I'm going to start from here. It's going to start recording from here. So we can see that it's recording. It's going to keep recording, but there's no punch out. So it will never stop because there's no punch out. Just going to keep going. Right? The other, the other way, if I delete this, let's say I don't want to punch in, but I want to punch out. So now if I start recording from here, it will start recording. It makes sense because there is no punch in. But the thing is that it's going to keep going, it's going to keep going, and it will stop at the punch out because we do have a punch out, right? And it stops. Now, again, I'm going to take you back to the same problem or the same issue, uh, which is not an issue, it's just the way it works. I'm going to start recording maybe right here. I'm punching in and I'm punching out. But this time I'm going to be enable the record. I'm going to do some recording. Then I'm going to be recording. Right? Is it recording? Now, every time that we loop, it's going to delete whatever we did before. So it's not keeping the notes from the previous recording. Every time we loop, it's just going to erase whatever until this point. And if I stop right here, we have two clips, the la latest recording and the previous recording. What uh, do I have to do to overdub every recording when we are working with a loop. All right, so all of that belongs to the overdub options right, the, with, that we have right here. And we have some, uh, you know, an overdub option for recording, and then we have something for automation, which is, you know, we, we're going to talk about that. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to record something. I want to keep every time, I'm going to make it shorter. I want to keep the notes or every time I record it when I am doing a loop. So I'm going to enable the overdub. This is the option. When it's enabled, it will not erase the MIDI information. It will just like merge it. It's like uh, creating an overdub. That's the actual name. So I'm going to start recording from here. Let me just stop. I'm going to be re doing some record. Made a mistake. I'm going to stand the cursor here. And I'm going to be play playing a C key. Right? That's the only thing I'm going to do. But now, notice that it keep, keeps going and going. And it's not deleting the previous information. So now if I play a higher key, the same key, it's just going to merge that. And I'm playing octaves. So we can see the difference. Now, if I stop it, we can really see that it's just overdubbing all the information which is really, really cool. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to show you something else. Right now we are working on the arrangement view. If I go to the session view, it's going to be a little bit different. So if I go to one clip and I enable recording and I just keep playing, it's going to just keep playing, right? So if I stop and go to that section, when you record on session view, it's just going to keep recording until you do stop. That's the way it works. Now, what happens that uh, if I create a clip that has a pretty fine length and then I want to record over, the, over it and I want to overdub. So it's going to just do it kind of by default. Now, this re rec that we have right here is the recording for the session. So it's going to record right here. But when you're working on the clip view, this is the record. And if I do delete this and I do a record, right, this one, and notice it's armed, right? You need to, to arm the track. I'm going to do a rec right here, and this is going to go on. It's going to turn on. If I do it, that is, it, then it's going on. If I disable, it's going to just stop recording. Right? That's the way it works on the, on the clip view. Now, still, I'm going to create a clip, and it has, uh, you know, a length, a predefined length. So if I uh, want to record something, it's going to do it within the boundaries of that loop. By default, it's going to just... It's going to overdub. I'm going to do it again. Right, so that's uh, you know pretty much the same concept, but taken to uh, to the to the uh, clip view.
So right here at the bottom, you do have, you know, the, uh, you know, the info view. So if you hover this, like, uh, you know, on top of this icon, it's going to say automation arm. So uh, by default, when this is on and you record some automation, it's going to record it for you. And let me just give you an example. I'm going to disable the loop and disable all the, uh, you know, the punch in and punch out. And I'm going to go to a filter just to bring something easy that we can uh, see. So right here we have a filter and I'm going to bring the auto filter to this drum loop, right? So pretty simple. We just have a filter. Now, if I play it back, we can see that if I move the filter, I am affecting it, but I'm affecting it live. It's not really recording it to the track. Now, I'm going to start over and I need to press the letter A to go to the automation. Right. And I need to find whatever it is that we are trying to automate with this one. So if I go here, we have the auto filter and then we can select maybe the filter type or whatever it is that you want to move. In this case, I'm going to be working with the frequency. So I'm going to be selecting the frequency. Now, if I move this, we can see that the frequency, this red line is going down. Let me just for now close this. It's going to go up and down because it's just listening to whatever we are doing. If I play back, it's not again, it's not really recording. But here's the trick. I'm going to start all over and I'm going to do a rec. So whenever you're recording and this option is on, it's going to record your changes and it's going to burn them to your track. But of course, it's using the automation and resonance. So again, it's just a way to record your automation. If I play it back, it's just gonna, you know, do your automation. This is how you create automation. Now, automation is a pretty big topic. So I might just record a different guide just to show you how to work with automation. But right from the start, this is the way you do this. If this is disabled, for now, I'm just gonna maybe remove all the automations. You can right click and it says show automation, but also delete the automation. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to disable this. And even I'm recording and I'm moving this is not going to record anything because the arm automation is off. Right. Now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to be recording the automation. I'm going to do something simple. I'm going to record and just just. I'm going to do something simple, right? Just something simple that we can really hear that something is going on with the automation. And I'm going to stop it. Now, if I play it back, we can hear the automation. What happens if I maybe move this control, the frequency or whatever it is that we are automating manually? I'm going to be pulling back and we can uh, right here and we can see that it's doing the automation. But for, now, for some reason, I'm just going to click and I'm just going to manually do it. Now notice that it goes gray. So this means that we are disabling the automation. But it's a temporary disable. That's why if you go here, it says re-enable automation. This is because you made some changes. So that automation, it's not being used. You're just doing it manually. But if you click it right here, you're going to go, you're going to go back to listening to the automation. And every time that you move it, it's going to disable. So if, uh, you know, you're using on a track that you're doing using automation on a track, and you move something or you disable the automation, you can always go back and re-enable it from here. Now, this one, I'm not going to be explaining this one because it's a pretty long topic. I'm just going to uh, first delete the automations. And for now, I'm just going to disable the auto filter. So what happens with this one? And let me just let me, you know what, just turn it off. So right here, I'm going to get out of the automation and I'm going to be standing on the synth and I'm going to be you know, standing right here. I'm going to delete all this. We don't need it. So right here, if I go there uh, to select this option, it says capture MIDI. Now, this is a feature where I need to kind of uh, explain a little bit more. It's going to take a long time. If I want to explain it correctly, I might record again a different video for this one because uh, it requires a little bit of practice. Now, this what it does is going to listen in the background, whatever it is that you're doing uh, when you are just playing back or whatever you, when you're playing. So, for example, let's say I'm just playing these drums and I'm just fooling around with my keyboard, right? Notice that this is gray. As soon as I play something, and I'm just fooling. All right, so that's what I did because I'm practicing. I'm practicing on top of the track. Now, this is what it does. It's going to listen to whatever you're playing and it's going to capture it. That's why it's called Capture MIDI, but it's not going to record it. Still, it's going to keep it in memory. 
but it keeps parts. So if you're practicing, maybe sometimes you want to say, okay, you know what? what? What did I do? I want to listen back to what did I, what, why I recorded or what actually I played. So this is a nice way to maybe try to get back what you just practiced without recording. Now there's a lot more to this. I'm going to be doing a separate video for this. Going, moving forward, we need to talk about the section, but there's something I didn't mention about this because it's just super simple. When you enable record the, the loop, we already know we, that we can do this manually, just extend it with the controls, the keys and everything else. So the uh, options that we have right here is the punch in and punch out uh, kind of a sections. It's just like this one. There, there's a way that we can, you know, set it uh, to one, for example, and it's just going to move it and, you know, adjust the different positions and length of the loop bar. That's all it is. Now, still, you know, very simple. We could do this manually. I think it's just a little bit easier. Now, we need to talk about all the options that we have right here. Okay, so this one, this option is the computer MIDI keyboard. So right now, I'm, I'm using uh, an Arturia, uh, Arturia MIDI controller. So if I play the keys, it's just going to do, it's going to play the synth. But if you enable this option, it means that you can use your, your keyboard, your computer keyboard to play some keys. So I'm doing it right now. I'm playing the A, the S, the W to go to the, uh, the E, to go to the black keys, D, F, G, H, and J. So this will allow you to use again, maybe your computer MIDI keyboard, uh, so, sorry, so your computer keyboard, just to record some parts. And you can do, of course, chords if you want to. And I'm using my computer keyboard. Now, the thing is that sometimes uh, you want to use some combinations of shift and letters to maybe just, you know, arm the recording or just, uh, you know, change the loop bar, you know, just use some hot keys. If this is enabled, uh, some of the options are not going to be available because you're using this to uh, use it as a MIDI keyboard, right? You're using your computer keyboard as MIDI. So you need to go here and just, you know, turn it off just to use your computer keyboard as a computer keyboard. Now, still sometimes you want to fast toggle between, you know, the on and off of this option. So you can do on your on your computer keyboard, the letter M, and it's going to enable and disable this, well, you know, while you're using the DAW. Now, then you have this option, which is going to be key. And this is, a. Um, it says right here, key map mode switch. So this is somehow related. So what you can do, you can uh, map some of your keys on your keyboard to something. Uh, let me give you an example. I'm going to say key. So when you do key, this is going to give you a list of options of, you know, of mappings. So let's say I want to turn on the drum track uh, with my uh, keyboard. So I'm going to be selecting this and then I'm going to type or use some of the letters on my keyboard and I'm going to use the uh, letter O. So when I do so, this is going to tell you key O is mapped to the mixer one on and off. So once you're done, you're going to need to go right here, click it again and you exit. But now I press the letter O and it's just going to turn off the channel. And if I press it again, it's going to turn it on, right? So the key is a fast way to control or maybe map uh, some action to your uh, computer keyboard. Still, you can go back to keys, select this one, and then you just can delete it just like this and kaboom is gone. Okay, so then we have the MIDI option, that one we have right here, and this follows the same idea than the key. We can map some of our, our you know, MIDI controller. You know, if you have a MIDI controller like uh, I do, for example, I'm using right now uh, the key level 49 from Arturia, and this one says a bunch of controls and encoders. So we can map it to whatever we want, just like we did with the key, but in this case is going to be uh, the MIDI controller. Now, you need to have this set it up. I'm going to show you in a minute, but for now, I'm just going to say MIDI. Notice it's just pretty much the same thing. The only thing that changes is the color. So I'm going to be doing MIDI, and what I want to do, I want to control the frequency with my MIDI controller. So I'm going to select this, and I'm going to move one of the encoders of my MIDI controller. So once it's mapped, you're going to get out of here. And now if I move my MIDI encoder, I'm going to be able to control this with my controller. Pretty simple. Now, with this right here, you can choose a minimum and maximum. And you have a bunch of options just to control uh, whatever is that you want to control a little bit better with your controller. But I'm going to go out. And if you are mapping this control, which is the one I have mapped right there, I can right click and I can just, you know, remove or edit the MIDI map, right? So I can just remove the key map because we don't have any, we just don't have it. But if I go again to this one, I can just edit the MIDI map. And again, it's just going to take you there 
Still, if I right click it, I can say delete mapping and kaboom, it's just gone. So again, all of this just like the key is a nice way to uh, controlling whatever it is that you want to control with your MIDI controller. Right, so right here we have the automation draw mode switch. You can turn this on by doing the letter B and doing, you know, just pressing the letter B on your keyboard. You turn it on and you turn it off. So this is a fast, easy way to do automation. If I go here, we have the auto filter and the frequency selected. So we have this one. And what I can do, I just can go here and just draw some automation. So something like that very easily. Now, the thing is that by doing it by list like this, you need to uh, do it with the lines, which is, you know, it's just fine. Now, if you enable the draw mode with the letter B, now it's going to be a pencil. So what you can do, you just can draw your automation just like this. And again, I'm just going to disable and go back. And we can see that, you know, we can just do it like that. If you want to, and this is doing it by bars. If I just, you know, go like this, it's just going to be in tiny bars. So it's following the grid that you have in the back. Now, the thing is that you can do alt and do just a, you know, a much more smoother uh, line. Now, all, again, all of this is just belongs to the automation topic. I feel like uh, it's not the right place where we just learn about this. Again, I'm just going to create a new video just to cover automation. But this is, uh, you know, the way, uh, the place where you just enable the draw mode on or off. And again, automation, it's a pretty long topic. You can even go right here and insert the shape, for example. I'm going to be uh, talking about that on a new one. All right, so and the last thing that we get right here is going to be your CPU meter. So this is, is going to tell you how much CPU consumption your uh, whatever it is that you're doing on your on your session you're doing. If you're throwing 55 plugins, well, this is just going to show you how much you're doing. If you're reaching to 100%, it means that you will need to maybe change the settings of your uh, of your session of your if your DAW just to you know consume and be a little bit more echo friendly. But yeah, if you're reaching 90% of 100%, it's going to tell you right here. And again, if you're reaching 100%, that is a problem. Maybe you want to freeze some tracks just to, you know, to have the uh, the, the DAW do a little bit less processing and avoid the clicking and all the pops that you will get. So that's pretty much it. Now, remember, if you liked all of this, uh, to like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks, you can go to the links of the description. You have a PayPal, you have a uh, Patreon, you know, you can be a one month Patreon and buy me a coffee that way. Or you have uh, the YouTube thanks. All right. So see you on the next one.